All right, the past couple of days have been anything short of special, let me tell you what. The whole uh, Steam Deck experience and the PC decision, all this stuff has been quite wild. But it leaves me asking myself some questions, as well as looking at my current tower of, or what I like to call, the city of gaming over there on my desk. It leaves one very, very sad realization. That there is a console that I own that I don't need at all. At least I don't think. Yeah, you guys have guessed it. It's my Xbox Series S. Now don't worry, I'm not getting rid of it because I think that it serves a very, very unique purpose. And well, the gaming rig that I want to build out is going to be something that'll be able to handle pretty much anything that the Series S was going to handle. And I do end up saving a little bit of money, kind of, by not having to do Game Pass Ultimate anymore. Well, I guess you do have to do Game Pass still. Whatever. It still is a really crazy thing. Like, the very thing that got me back into gaming as an adult, the Series S, is now becoming more and more useless to me, which is wild. It's still a very valuable machine, honestly. I'm not taking away from the fact that the Series S is the best value in gaming, especially when paired with Game Pass Ultimate. There's no denying that. Anyone, anyone who says that there's that that's not true they don't know what they're talking about series s game pass combo is out of this world insane but i'm faced with a really interesting question and that's one that i've been thinking about over these past couple of weeks and my series s has actually been unplugged from its station over there on my desk because i've been using my steam deck in its place so the question is as follows if you own a PC or a Steam Deck, well not really a Steam Deck as much, but if you own a PC, do you need an Xbox? Online, I have seen multiple times in the comments people saying that an Xbox PC combination is redundant, which I also tend to believe. Oh geez Louise, Peppa cheese, I just spilt water everywhere. I have to rinse out this mason jar because it was just sitting in my cupboard. My normal decanter is dirty, and um, I'm trying to make this video during nap time, so I'm not going to go and try to clean the decanter that I normally use just to get this going. But I've seen it. I've seen people say, no, you don't need it. It's redundant. And I thought to myself, no, that can't be the case. I mean, it certainly is far more affordable to do the Series S route than it is to do the uh, PC route. I mean, just in my findings alone, I'm going to be spending... A lot of money getting that PC built up, which is fine. That's kind of the purpose of it all. The very first part of the PC build is to beat every console in performance. And you know, some people will be like, that's not gonna be that hard. Well, okay, cool. But my goal in doing so is trying to figure out uh, how much does it take to beat all these consoles? And I am gonna lump it all together, right? Because the only thing that these consoles have over PC gaming is access, truly just access, I guess, ease of use, but I'm going to admit that because to some PC gaming may be a little more complicated, <laughs> but to others, it's just a part of your daily life. Very they're very familiar with it. They understand how it works. So it's not complicated to them in the slightest. There's just a learning curve. So I'm going to remove the idea that PC gaming is more complicated than console gaming because I believe that that may be, uh, have, th that thought may have been biased to me because I am someone who doesn't PC game. So my unfamiliarity with the very process was one that drove that opinion. So that's gone. But the first goal is how much does it cost to match the gaming experience? As things have progressed and my interest in this has increased, I've started to do research and I realized that Though, uh, Steam, the Steam Deck, which I have been using um, quite a bit over these past, uh, this past seven days, the Steam Deck, or eight now, um, is something that remind, not reminded me, but uh, I discovered, ended up becoming very redundant in my whole gaming setup, you know. Um, I, I am buying games that I could buy on my PlayStation and my Xbox, and my Switch rather, as well, right? I can certainly play Nino Kuni on my Switch. But... It still is a 
I don't know, like, I, I love the Switch. I really do, I always have talked about it, but that feeling is pretty good. Um, but then I look at the Xbox, right? The Xbox Series S specifically, and I think to myself, if I was to face the Series S Steam Deck debacle, which one do you get? Do you get a Steam Deck or do you get a Series S? The price point certainly is unmatched, right? Series S, 350 bucks, Steam Deck around 600. So if that's gonna stop you, then yes, yeah, Series S all the way. But that versatility, you're not gonna hit the same markers. You're not gonna get the same gaming experience you would get on a Series S on a Steam Deck as far as frame rates and stuff like that. The Series S, for the most part, is gonna be able to beat the uh, Steam Deck in a lot of those things. I mean, the size alone allows it to do a little bit more. Um, there's definitely gonna be better ventilation <laughs> as far as what they're gonna be able to push and heat up the, all the different components inside and cool it down. You can't do that as much on this Steam Deck. So, and then there's the size of the components, right? I don't know exactly a like for like comparison. I don't know what they look like inside the Series S and the Steam Deck, but it's definitely something to think about. But when I was looking at these two, I thought, well, which one is more valuable? And I'm realizing that aside from a, a few games, a few that I play, which I can still access elsewhere, the now that Steam Deck and PC gaming is something that is slowly, well, that is now a section of my gaming thing, Xbox has become redundant, like completely replaceable. But I think that they want it to be. I think that the best thing that Xbox has going for it is that you can absolutely replace it. That's the best thing it has going for it. Because Xbox, unlike PlayStation, and certainly unlike Nintendo, has positioned themselves in such a way that you can access all of their games, which is where they make their money, anywhere. You can access it on your phone through their cloud streaming app. You can access it through the PC Game Pass. You can access it through the Microsoft Store, Steam. They definitely are a computer-based company first. Microsoft is Microsoft. Xbox is their gaming section. And because Microsoft is the big papa in it all, it makes it that the Xbox really is a low stakes console when it comes to all gaming. They have very little to lose, which I think is genius. I think it's one of the best things that Xbox has going for it. Whether or not I find their games particularly exciting, and by their games, I mean games that are only available to me on some sort of Microsoft machine, whether it's something that runs Windows or it's an Xbox machine, the games that are exclusive to that machine itself aren't ones that I am drawn to so much so that I need to have one of those machines. On top of that, I don't have a library. I haven't had an Xbox my whole life. And so the Xbox library that I have is a few purchased games that I also have purchased elsewhere, as well as just Game Pass access, which I haven't used or utilized at all over the past definitely seven days or eight days, but even longer than that. I repurchased the Xbox One because I realized that as someone who talks about gaming, it's probably smart for me to have all the different devices. I was also very excited about Starfield, which ended up not being as exciting as I wanted it to be. And I, you know, have played a couple games on the Xbox since, like Lies of P and stuff like that, but I'm more curious about how Lies of P runs on the Steam Deck. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I have spent some money on games, which is what you end up doing when you have a Steam Deck or any sort of Steam library. You purchase quite a few games, but I have spent some money on games, all of which I already own. Crazy, right? I bought Final Fantasy VII Remake and Integrate, and... <sighs> against my better judgment, God of War. Even though God of War looks the best ever on a PlayStation 5, I'm still so drawn to the experience because PlayStation dropped the ball when it comes to playing their games anywhere I wanted. I can't play God of War on the PS portal wherever I want without some sort of terrible latency. And so I am forced to, instead of spending $200 on that, spend $600 on a Steam Deck and then buy the PC games. But 
PlayStation's getting hip to it. They got Horizon on there. They have uh, God of War. They have Spider-Man. I mean, they're dropping these games on PC and you're able to experience them better and better and better. And I hate to be the person here that is going to say this after two years, three years almost, of saying that it doesn't matter. I am at a point in my gaming life where I'm just going to come out and say it. When I'm playing on a machine like a PlayStation or an Xbox, Nintendo gets a pass, but when I'm playing on a machine like a PlayStation or an Xbox, I want a 60 frames per second experience. I'm just gonna say it. And I know that the Steam Deck does not offer a 60 frames per second experience, but the Steam Deck for what it is, well, I mean, I can rephrase that actually, because it does offer that experience. You're just gonna really turn down quite a few settings to get it, but you can still achieve it. I'm finding myself that say these things i can't believe it like after three years of me being like frames don't matter games matter i think that we're at a point in gaming where while that is always true look at tears of the kingdom right look at those games they're beautiful games they're incredible and they are all, like so much fun at 30 frames per second um I'm looking at the future of gaming and understanding finally where that sentiment comes from. The whole, you know, why, you know, play it at 30 when you can play it at 90, you know, which is very possible with some of these games on a PC. I am just rest, not wrestling, but like thinking through this whole gaming thing, right? It is a hobby of mine. It's also a job. So... I am more uh, likely to take some of these side quests, for lack of a better example, right? That's what PC gaming is going to start as, is a side quest, but it very likely could become a main quest. I'm not sure. But I have kind of put a hold on purchasing any sort of game that I can buy on Steam uh, or on PC. I've kind of taken a step back and go, well, am I going to buy it on PlayStation? Am I going to buy it on Xbox? No, I'm not. Or should I just maybe wait to purchase it on Steam? Because as it stands now, as I told you guys yesterday in Cup 38, my Steam Deck is my first gaming PC. That's what I'm considering it. It is a gaming PC. And this is where we're starting. So as of, you know, December 18th, 2023, Julian Melnick's gaming PC is a Steam Deck. Hopefully, you know, the gaming PC will change and upgrade and go from there. I will still maintain my Steam Deck because I love it, but... I'll go from there. I I made a statement in Cup 20, not Cup, Cup 38, I think. It might have been 37. I'm not too sure. It doesn't really matter. Basically, the statement was, hold on, let me close my window real quick. I am more compelled to pick up, it was 37. No, 38. It was 38. It was my seven-day review. I'm more compelled to pick up a Nintendo Switch because of the way it looks than I am to pick up something like the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is very uninspiring as far as it's built. I think I might have jumped the gun there. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that the Steam Deck looks inspiring at all. I'm going to stand on that hill and die on that hill. But I, today, right, had them sitting side by side. And I was, you know, I had some moments to myself. And I grabbed the Steam Deck over the Nintendo Switch. I never thought that day would come. And, um... It was because, you know, I wanted to learn more. So I guess maybe that's why. I'm not sure. This is all a process, right? Um, but someone wrote in the comments, they asked me, which one would you choose? Steam Deck or, Play or um, not PlayStation or Nintendo Switch? If you had to buy one. I still would buy the Nintendo Switch 10 times over the Steam Deck. If I had to go down to just one gaming console at the end of the day, it would be my Nintendo consoles because Nintendo holds the experience for me that I can play for the longest amount of time, if I'm being honest with you. Like Nintendo as a whole, I mean, I, everything about it. Like I, I, on a rainy day, would sooner like to sit down and work through like a Mario game um, than boot up my PlayStation 5, sit at my desk and play through, you know, whatever, God of War or... Uh, Guardians for that matter. Yes, both games I can play on my Steam Deck. I understand that. But I'm just saying that when it comes down to it, like through and through, it has taken a lot in me to not, um, because of the way that things work on the internet, um, not be like, you know what, let's just hold out and let's get into Nintendo and be a Nintendo guy. I've wanted to like a hundred times over. 
But what I'm seeing is that as a, like as just a normal person, a dude, just we're just chilling, right? Talking. What I'm realizing is that I'm not just a Nintendo guy. As much as I love Nintendo, everything about it, I wanna learn everything about it. I'm a gamer, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer, I'm just gonna say it, dude. Uh, but no, I'm a gamer through and through. But with that comes a couple things, like how do I wanna play video games? I don't have a lot of time in the world, so do I really, really, and this is something I've thought about over these past few days as I've wrestled with the idea of diving into PC gaming. I don't have enough time. Do I really wanna mess with settings to get everything good to go? I think that I was, um, I had misunderstood, or I was very, very uh, uneducated on the fact that PC gaming uh, isn't, by no means is it, it's not as easy as console gaming, but it isn't this crazy cumbersome nothing works kind of thing. I mean, it's designed to work, it's just you have to put in the work. And so, you know, that's something that I think I was a little more naive to. I mean, when you're talking about a certain thing and when you have your blinders on and you're trying to be that guy, it's pretty easy to, you know, in, in a lot of ways, end up demonizing that you don't know of, right? And so you just kind of make it the uh, sub subliminal enemy because it's easier to look at it and be like, that's a waste of time than it is to, you know, learn about it and uh, try to figure it out rather. Especially when you think you have no time, which I certainly do think I have no time quite. I also realized that it would be far simpler for me to maintain an Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo setup because of the dial, it's so dialed in. With Xbox, just Game Pass, simple. No games purchased there. With PlayStation, everything else. And with Nintendo first party, done. Now throwing PC in the mix, it complicates things. A lot. But the excitement of it all really comes down to what I want to learn. I want to learn why. Why is 56% of gamers PC? Like, why is that? Why is it not 44% gamers and 56 consoles? Why is gaming on a PC seemingly more and more popular as time goes on? Why, though it takes a lot of effort, it seems to be like a go-to way of going about things? Why if games like, you know, Final Fantasy VII Reunion, or not Reunion, but uh, Rebirth, and Ratchet and Clank, or Horizon Forbidden West, God of War, Ragnarok, Final Fantasy 16, these games, why if those are exclusive to console, do people still prefer to play on PC? And the final question I have is, was I wrong all along? Is it not and this or that? Is it really just and? My goal with this new adventure is to take every single statement I had made between Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and Steam Deck, but really PC gaming, and challenge it. I wanna challenge the idea that I only got an hour to play video games, so I'm just gonna play it on a console. It's easier, grab and go. Is that true? I'm gonna challenge the, it's just more financially responsible to stick to console gaming. Is that true? I'm gonna challenge the, it is not possible to have the type of gaming experience you have on console on a PC. Is that true? Lastly, I'm gonna challenge the, you just, and this one I've never said, but here it is. You just feel cooler using a console. Is that even true? I don't know. This is all discovery, dude. It's just discovery. And what I like about this format that we've, you know, kind of figured out together is that's what this is. This is discovery. Will it change over the next, you know, six months? Absolutely. It's not always gonna be this daily, cup of coffee kind of thing, though drinking a cup of coffee probably will be a part of it 90% of the time. Um, as things go on, like I'm gonna build a PC, that's gonna take some involvement. I'm gonna go shopping for PC parts. We're gonna go and get and discover different PC parts. What, what really is the main purpose of what I want to do is explore every single type of nook and cranny. I wanna figure out, hey, if I spend 30 days on mouse and key, can I increase my, you know, eliminations in Fortnite? Because when it comes to gaming, I realized that my passion for gaming was one that I always looked at as something that was practical. But with you guys, I can look at it impractically. I can look at some of the things that I would never do. I would never invest in trying to learn mouse and keyboard. 
unless it was basically for a video. <laughs> Can I get to like a better elimination with mouse and key? It is something that I'm really curious about. But a lot of these things take a dive. They take, they take a jump into a direction that I've never explored because I've been so concerned with maintaining a narrative. A narrative being console only. I mean, for goodness sakes, this is caffeine and consoles, right? I'm gonna have to figure out a different name for that. All I can say is this. At the end of the day, and this is something I hope that I, I, I it's not new. I hope that this is something that has been shining through, even though I've been really heavy handed in the Xbox category, which is ironic. And I've been at times Nintendo only, all this stuff. I think it really needs to shine through that when it comes to playing video games, interacting with games, it does not matter what you do it on, ever. Some of my greatest experiences, is it even somewhere I can grab? Is it not here? Oh, it's in my backpack, I think. Yeah, it's because I'm using it. Yep. Some of my greatest experiences, yeah, it's nowhere to be seen, are in a Game Boy SP, of which I still use. I'm, I'm like certain I had it here. No, I still use it, my Game Boy SP. It just doesn't matter what you play on. That being said, there is a whole world of gaming that I've never experienced. And my dear friend Chase said, dude, I don't want to piss in your cereal, bro, but like, you know that most of the games that you can play on PC, you can also play on console. He of which is someone who plays on PC, so cool it, guys. I said, I know. He goes, yeah, it's a world. that It's certainly a, a crazy awesome world, PC gaming, but you have the ability to play 99% of the games that you're gonna want to play already and pretty well with a PlayStation 5 and Xbox and stuff like that. I know, but, but I still am curious. What is the draw? Why? I have to know, I have to know. And so I'm going to, cause I have a few more minutes before my kids wake up, finish this cup of coffee off camera and play some Resident Evil 4 on my Steam Deck while it's raining outside and just get super cozy with it. I'm stoked. As cozy as you can get with Resident Evil 4, I suppose. Well, in the truest, the truest fashion, more than I've ever said it before. Happy gaming.